But let's do this thing. We are here to finish our sermon series on faith, right? We've been, over the course of seven weeks, been looking at so many examples of men and women of great faith, uh, and we've been kind of having the goal set out of looking at their faith and seeing how it is that we can emulate those listed in Hebrews chapter 11 and in other places within Scripture. And last week, we took a look at Enoch, this man uh, kind of shrouded in mystery, only referenced in Scripture a small handful of times, and yet he's listed here in this passage as being a man of great faith, right? And it serves as an awesome example for us that that what we do is not necessarily as important as who we do it for, not that our actions don't matter, but obviously whatever it is that Enoch did was pretty important to God, and whatever your obedience or your purpose is for God is your unique thing, and you should do it to the best of your ability. And so as we finish this sermon series, uh, I want to kind of look at one of the last kind of heavily mentioned people here in Hebrews 11, and I want to encourage you, I, I don't have any slides today, so I'm going to tell you, just dog ear your Bible on Hebrews 11, because we're going to be bouncing back and forth between uh, this passage of Scripture and, and a few others. So kind of dog ear that page, keep that tab saved in your Bible or whatever, and uh, let's read Hebrews 11, verse 31. It says this, By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Okay, let's pause for a second, and let's break down what we know based on nothing other than Hebrews 11.31, what we know about this person named Rahab. So what do we know? Somebody tell me. She's a prostitute. Okay, so we know her job. And what does she do? Say it again. She refuses to obey God. Not quite. She did not perish with those who were disobedient. Why? Because she had given a friendly Welcome to the spies. So we know two things. We know she's a prostitute, and we know that she was friendly to the spies. But what the heck does that even mean? And a question that pops up within my head, I don't know if that pops up in your head, is we're reading Hebrews 11. It's, it's the section that is called by faith that we here in, in modern-day Christianity kind of call like the hall of faith, like the hall of fame, right? Um, why, if this passage of Scripture is meant to be showing respect and 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 reverence to these these men and women why does it mention her kind of we'll say less than savory uh job but i think we need to get a little bit of context let's go to joshua chapter two if you would please joshua chapter two back up all the way to the new testament or excuse me the old testament and as you flip there joshua chapter two let me give you a little context to reflect the content as we get into it. <clears throat> Joshua chapter 2, uh, many of y'all kind of know some of this context, but Moses goes up to Pharaoh. God's people are, are trapped in, in Egypt. They're held hostage. They are slaves. Moses goes to Pharaoh, says, let my people go. There's a few plagues. You know, there's some, there's some blood. There's some parting of seas. They wander into the desert. Y'all know this part so far, yes? Nod your head if you get, you're sticking with me. Okay, cool. They wander in the desert, and then Moses dies and is replaced by this man named Joshua. And Joshua is going to lead his people into the promised land and attempt to take this land from the Canaanites. And we pick up in the story in Joshua chapter 2, verse 1. Joshua, the son of Nun, sent two men secretly from Shittim as spies, saying, Go, view the land, especially Jericho. And they went and came into the house of a prostitute whose name was Rahab and lodged there. And it was told to the king of Jericho, Behold, the men of Israel have come here tonight to search out the land. Then the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men uh, who have come to you, who entered your house, for they have come to search out the land. So Joshua sent some spies into the land and said, Hey, you're going to survey the area. We're going to see kind of what we're up against and we're going we're gonna to get a lay of the land. I need you all to do that. And they find themselves in town, and they hide in the home of Rahab. And we continue in verse 4. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. Uh, and she said, 
True, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. And when the gate was about to be closed at dark, the men went out. I do not know where the men went. Pursue them quickly, for you will overtake them. So Rahab tells the guards, look, I don't know what these guys were all about. They came here, but I, they, they went that way. And if you, if you look that way, I bet you could probably catch them because you're just a little bit faster than them. And then we continue in verse 8. But, uh, or excuse me, let's, let's, go from, uh, let's go from verse 7. Uh, so the men pursued after them on the way to the Jordan as far as the fords, and the gate was shut as soon as the pursuers had gone out. Before the men lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. Y'all remember this verse 10 right here. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites uh, who were beyond the Jordan to Sion and Og, whom you devoted to destruction. And as soon as we heard it, our hearts melted, and there was no spirit left in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heavens above and on the earth beneath. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that as I have dealt kindly with you, you will also deal kindly with my father's house. And give me a sure sign that you will save alive my father, my mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and deliver our lives from death. And the men said to her, our lives for yours, even to death. If you do not tell this business of ours, then when the Lord gives us the land, we will deal kindly and faithfully with you. And so she lets the spies go, and the rest, as they say, is history. Who, 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 who knows the song? Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. Jericho, come on, somebody, Jericho, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the, okay, some of y'all grew up Baptist, that's good, that's good, right, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down just a few chapters later in verse 6, verse 16, uh, excuse me, chapter 6, verse 16, says, and at the seventh time, when the priests had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And the city and all that it is, that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall live, because she hid the messengers whom we sent. I think it's really interesting if you go back to Hebrews 11 real quick. And I told you we were going to be kind of bouncing. I think it's really interesting if you, if you go back to Hebrews 11, the, the author does something. He, he must have been a good pastor because he goes, By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, and put foreign armies to flight. He does this awesome little thing where he goes, uh, we're going to list all of these people, and we get to Rahab, this woman who, even though she was a prostitute, she, uh, she gave a friendly welcome to the spies. Now, I could go on and give you example after example after example after example after example, but I won't. That's a good pastorism right there. I think it's interesting that, that Rahab is one of the last figures that we really get into any kind of depth in, in Hebrews chapter 11. Because I think that it, it makes a great kind of end cap on this series as well, and a great point proven through her story. And this is the big point that I want us to hear tonight, is that no matter where you're from, no matter what your past, no matter what your history is, you can be used by God if you will trust him. Why is Rahab here in Hebrews 11 listed as Rahab the prostitute. She was so much more than that. We see through her actions that she was a woman of great faith, and we'll get to kind of what she does a little bit later. She was so much more than that, and yet Scripture calls her Rahab the prostitute, and I think it proves the point that God can use the lowest of the lowest of the low. 
that not only was she a woman, now hear me, I'm not saying that that makes her lesser, but in the time of Scripture, it kind of did in society. That's just the way it was. Not only was she a woman, she was also not Jewish, and she was a prostitute. She was the lowest of the lowest of the low, and yet she's listed here as being a woman of mighty faith. God can use you no matter what your past, no matter what your history, no matter what your skin color, your gender, your race. God can use you if you are willing to trust him. Now, hear me. I'm not saying that we as Christians should have blind faith. I think that we need to take after Rahab's example and that we should look at God's track record in order to have faith off of that. Hebrews 11, 1, this whole series, we started with this, that faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. She is basing her faith the, the, the thing that she has, cannot see, she is basing off of the track record that we've seen God do, right? Go back to Joshua chapter 2. I told you all to remember verse 10. As she's speaking, she says this. She says, we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sion and Og, whom you devoted to destruction. She begins to list these accomplishments that God has and these things that God has done. And she knows based off of what he's done in the past that God, we, we know that Jericho is y'all's because I can see what he's done. And even though these are the things unseen, I can see what you have done in the previous and I can know what you're going to do moving forward. And so what do we learn from Rahab? Just two things, just two things that I think we can learn from Rahab, and then we'll break up into small groups. <clears throat> two practical takeaways that I want to give y'all. First one is this, keep a list. I've said this before, and I'll keep saying it again. One practical thing that I learned when I was at the lowest point in my life was to keep a list of God's accomplishments. In 2020, I was in the middle of going through a divorce and had found out that my wife had been cheating on me and I was distraught. I was, I remember laying on the floor of my living room, screaming out to God, why would you allow this to happen? Why would, if you love me so much, why would you allow this person to come into my life and hurt me this badly? And when she told me that she had been cheating on me, I remember going to meet with my pastor and going, I don't know what to do. And he told me something that I have carried with me ever since then and that I want to pass on to y'all. And he told me to keep a list of all the things that God had blessed me with, that when I wake up in the morning, I should on a sheet of paper write down one thing that God has done. And to do that every day and every day and add on to that list every single day. Keep it on a piece of paper. Keep it on a sticky note attached to your, to your mirror in the bathroom. Keep it on your notepad, on your phone. But when you keep a list of God's accomplishments and you see how it is that he's moved and worked in your life and how he's been there and faithful to you each and every single day, then when life gets hard, and I think we all know that life gets hard sometimes, you can look back at that list. I wish I had. I, I just finished moving and packing all my stuff in a storage unit, so I don't have my list. But I wish that I could say, God is not done filling out this list, and he's adding new things to it each and every day. Rahab was able to look at God's track record and go, he's done this and this and this and this and this, and so I know he's going to do this and this and this and this and this. And I think that's a lesson that we can learn. The second thing is just to remember Rahab. To remember that, that when, when you are feeling like you are not good enough, smart enough, holy enough, qualified enough, that you don't have anything to offer to the kingdom of God, that we remember Rahab, who is the lowest of the lowest of the low, and she could and did get used by God to do some great and mighty things because she put her trust in God. Your position does not define your purpose. Your past does not define your purpose. Rahab the prostitute. You know what she did? 
you know what she would bring about? Go to Matthew chapter 1. This is going to be the last passage we read today. Rahab the prostitute would become one of many in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Look at this. Matthew chapter 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. I'm going to read through, I'm going to speed read through these. <clears throat> Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar, and Perez the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Ram, and Ram the father of Abnibadad, and Abnibadad the father of Nashon, and Nashon the father of Salmon, and Salmon the father of Boaz by who? I was going a little quick. And Boaz, the father of Obed by uh, Ruth, and Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of David the king. From the prostitute to the mother of a king that would bring about our Savior, the woman who was nothing according to society, would become one who would bring about our Savior. And so anytime you ever start to doubt that because of my past, because, I've, because of what I've done, because of who I was, I can't be used by God, we need to remember Rahab because the Bible is a story of God using broken, messed up, flawed, sinful people to fulfill his perfect will. And we can do the same if we'll just put our trust in him let's pray father god thank you for your word lord thank you for the example we see set by the men and women that came before us lord and all that they can teach us about how it is that we can draw closer and closer to you father i pray lord i pray for for those here that that maybe feel like they aren't worthy to be used by you or feel like they're too broken to be used by you. And Lord, that you would just remind them of Rahab when those thoughts start to creep in. God, I, I pray that, that you would help us to, to keep a list of your accomplishments. And Lord, remember that you're not done. God, as we get ready to go into small groups and then leave this place, Lord, would you help us to not just let this be a, a lesson that we hear and it goes in one ear and out the other, but God, would we be moved by the example that we see of Rahab? And God, would we strive to be a people that serves you and puts our trust in you regardless of where we came from and regardless of what we've done? God, the blood of Jesus has covered all our sins. And so would you help us to remember that and to live like that? It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>